Hello all. In this video, we're going to talk about an important system of excretory system chapter that is renin angiotensinogen aldosterone system. This, in short, it is called RAS, R A A S, renin angiotensinogen aldosterone system. This system explains how urine will be concentrated. The, the urine we are going to excrete, it should be concentrated. That means in terms of chemical and biology language, in terms of biology, it should be hypertonic. The urine that we are excreting will be hypertonic because of the important system that occurs in the kidneys that is called RAS mechanism. And this mechanism explains how the urine will become concentrated. That means how, how urine will be, which is going to be excreted is hypertonic. So this mechanism is very, very important for neat examination. Definitely we can expect an MCQ from this. And how it will start. Now I'm going to explain in this video. First of all, there is an arteriole, I should tell you, that is called afferent arteriole. Afferent arteriole. That brings the blood to the glomerulus. That brings the blood to the glomerulus of Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus belongs to Bowman's capsule. It gets the blood from Afferent arteriole, afferent arteriole. This is renal afferent arteriole, which brings the blood for filtration, glomerular filtration topic. I have explained in another video. You can, uh, you can have a look into that video. And then afferent arteriole brings the blood into glomerulus of Bowman's capsule for the filtration. And there must be certain blood pressure should be maintained. The certain blood pressure is required to pump the blood into glomerulus. If the blood pressure is less, if the blood pressure is less, this afferent arteriole cannot fill the blood into the glomerulus in sufficient amount. Then we may get a question, how this blood pressure will be less? This blood pressure is less because the body fluid volume is less. When the body fluids volume is less, there will be less blood pressure and this less blood pressure leads to the inefficiency of afferent arteriole to bring blood into the glomerulus in sufficient amount. So, when body fluid volume is less, this will, this will happen. When the body fluid volume is when the body fluid volume is less or decreased, whatever it may be, when the body fluids volume is less, the, I already discussed the afferent arteriole is inefficient. It will become inefficient to pump the blood into the glomerulus. Then in that case, in this situation, there are certain uh, cells are present nearby this afferent arteriole. Those cells are called juxta glomerular cells. Juxta glomerular cells. Which is belongs to, these cells are belongs to juxta glomerular apparatus. Juxta glomerular apparatus it belongs to. So these juxta glomerular cells will identify this, will detect or identify will identify this and the secrete and the secrete an enzyme called renin the secrete an enzyme called renin who juxta glomerular cell secrete renin and this renin enzyme this renin enzyme will now convert convert angiotensinogen angiotensinogen into angiotensin angiotensin this is one angiotensin one i'll tell you what is this angiotensinogen and angiotensin very simple angiotensinogen is 
a kind of plasma protein. It's a kind of plasma protein. It's a plasma protein, which is further synthesized in the liver, which is synthesized in the liver, synthesized in liver. This angiotensinogen is a kind of protein. It's a polypeptide, plasma protein. It's a polypeptide that is synthesized in the liver cells, synthesized in liver cells, polypeptide synthesized, synthesized. Okay, that is nothing but plasma protein and that is angiotensinogen. It is in inactive state. The angiotensinogen is inactive. That means it's a pro, it's a pro stage from which, from which this angiotensin 1 will be formed. That means it is an active form. This angiotensin 1 is an active form in the presence of renin. In the presence of renin, the renin converts this angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And this angiotensin 1 also a peptide only, but which consisting of 10 amino acids. It's a polypeptide only, but only 10 amino acids are present in this. That means it's a decapeptide. We can call it decapeptide also. And further, this angiotensinogen, angiotensin 1, will be further converted into this angiotensin 1 is further converted into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2, which is octapeptide. Octapeptide, that means 8 amino acids will be present in this octapeptide, angiotensin 2. And this angiotensin 2 is performing two important roles here. This angiotensin 2 is going to perform two important roles. Those two important roles are number one, suppose I'm writing here AT2, angiotensin 2. There are two important roles. Number one, it is a powerful vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstrictor. As a powerful vasoconstrictor. Vaso means blood vessel, vessels, blood vessels. Constrictor, that means narrows. So, automatically what happens? Blood pressure will be increased. So, this angiotensinogen 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor which leads to, which leads to increase in the blood pressure. Increase in blood pressure and thereby renal blood flow is increased. Renal blood flow increases that means renal afferent arteriole was inefficient to pump blood into glomerulus, right? Now, the renal afferent arteriole will pump blood with more pressure so that the glomerulus is getting sufficient blood for the filtration. And thereby, glomerular filtration rate will increase. Thereby, glomerular filtration rate, GFR, glomerular filtration rate, it will increase. So this is one role. Once again, I'm repeating, this angiotensinogen 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor. That means it narrows the blood vessels so that the blood pressure will become high. And as a result, the renal blood flow will be increased to the glomerulus and thereby glomerular filtration rate will be increased. So this is one role. This is one effect of this angiotensin 2. And the other one, one more role is it stimulates it stimulates adrenal cortex adrenal cortex of adrenal gland we know that adrenal gland is above the kidneys only ad means above renal means kidneys right we know that the kidney a pair of glands which are called adrenal glands because their location only they are called adrenal. Ad means above, renal means kidney, right? So a pair of adrenal glands. Each adrenal gland is composed of two regions, outer cortex, inner medulla, right? Outer cortex, inner medulla region, each adrenal gland. So outer cortex is nothing but adrenal cortex. 
So this angiotensinogen 2 stimulates adrenal cortex, stimulates adrenal cortex so that this adrenal cortex is going to secrete, secrete a hormone called aldosterone. It's a hormone called aldosterone. And this aldosterone will further promotes this aldosterone, promotes or induces whatever it may be. Promotes or induce ionic reabsorption. Ionic reabsorption, ionic reabsorption in DCT. That means distal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, as well as collecting duct, collecting duct of nephrons, of nephrons. So as ions are going to be reabsorbed into the body from the nephric filtrate, even here also the glomerular filtration rate is increased and moreover here ions are being uh, reabsorbed. So the nephric filtrate will become hypertonic. That means the urine will become hypertonic. It will become hypertonic. That means the concentration of urine is increased because of this functions. So this is entire Ross mechanism. When the body fluid volume is less, when the body fluid volume is less, this juxtaglomerular cells of juxtaglomerular apparatus will identify and secrete an enzyme called renin enzyme, which further converts angiotensinogen, which is synthesized in the liver, into angiotensin 1 and it further converted into angiotensin 2 which is an octapeptide and this angiotensin 2 has two functions. Number one, it is acting as a powerful vasoconstrictor which increases in BP blood pressure and thereby renal blood flow increases and thereby filtration rate also increases a lot. Next, second role of angiotensin 2 is it stimulates adrenal cortex. Thereby, the adrenal cortex secretes a hormone called aldosterone. And further, this aldosterone will promote ionic reabsorption from the nephric filtrate so that the concentration, the tonicity, the concentration of the urine will become increased as a result. So, this is Ralph's mechanism. Hope you understood. Thank you very much.